Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. And today, we're going to talk about kind of aesthetics. A little bit about uh, cleaning up wiring for our conversion. And so, we're going to use this demonstration vehicle right here. Uh, we'll kind of look at the before and after effects of using uh, wire ties and split loom to clean up uh, our wire. So let's take a closer look and see what can be done to change something from this to this. This was converted to electric. It's a demonstration vehicle. And the conversion part was already kind of cleaned up and had been, you know, kind of orderly and uh, nicely uh, segregated. The wiring was routed nicely and wire tied. And then a bunch of stuff was added. For instance, uh, driving lights, turn signals, headlights, so forth, horn, and all that added a lot of wiring, added relays, uh, you know, and, and just lots of wiring. And so all of that is, is routed where it needs to go in kind of a systematic way, but just the wire just run unattended um, isn't very sightly looking. So what we're going to do is maybe in some cases uh, slightly reroute a wire um, or uh, just uh, combine it with others to put it in a common loom. And then we're going to use some split loom to finish the overall cleanup. For instance, here's some split loom right here and that was uh, the conversion uh, setup this is the elect electronics coming from the rear forward to a terminal strip and so that was originally like I said uh, done but there's a lot of wiring added since the conversion was done to add lights and uh, and so forth to this vehicle. So let's uh, let's get started on cleaning that up. Well, first off, let's start by talking about wire loom, split loom. Uh, I believe we've showed you this in a previous video. Uh, it's just a split rib plastic material. It comes in lots of different sizes. Here's a larger, and here's some smaller stuff. And so we have all the different sizes, and based on the bundle of wires that we're going to be uh, looming, we'll determine what size loom we'll use, of course. But before you do all that, before you start covering everything up, this is something you should have done while you were doing the wiring to begin with, and that is do a schematic. I mean, once this is all tied up and loomed, to trace something is uh, a lot more difficult than it was if you had done a schematic at the time that you were doing the wiring. And if you didn't do that at the time you're wiring, now would be the time to do it for sure. So that you can still have wires loose and you can trace and see where they go. So not only make yourself a schematic, but also a parts uh, or component location uh, legend. So that you know that this relay does what, and this one does what, and this fuse goes to what, and what are these fuses for? Size, and what are we fusing? What circuit is being fused? You know, it doesn't take very long and uh, at least for me, in my memory, I don't remember 
<laughs> what goes where and what we did on a particular project. So highly recommend, do yourself a favor, make a schematic so that you have a record of how you did the project so that if you have a problem, it will save you a lot of time and hassle in troubleshooting. Okay, so we're gonna assume that you've done that. So the next thing is gonna be cleaning it up. And because this is a process that takes time, we could do a time lapse, that kind of stuff. I really don't have time to do that. And so we won't be doing a time lapse. I'm gonna discuss a few of the points and then we're gonna show you kind of the before and after, which you've already seen the before. But we're going to basically be looking at, you know, where are these wires going to and from? How can we route them in a clean, systematic, and aesthetically pleasing fashion? Um, and so the first thing, first priority kind of in my mind is, is, is how can we route them in a way that it's going to uh, clean it up so that if we did have to do some tracing in the future, that would be easy. Um, because even with the schematic sometimes, um, you're like, okay, which, which wire is that? If you color code them and everything, it makes it easy, and we tend to do that. We try to do everything we can to make it easy for that worst case scenario that you have to go back and figure something out. Um, and, and then keep it clean so that components are easy to find. Don't bury, uh, you know, a fuse, an inline fuse or something under a bundle of wires. Uh, keep things so that serviceability is um, at its easiest. And, and then, you know, uh, once that is done and you've secured them with wire ties, And for most of it, we just use two different sizes of wire ties to accomplish that. Again, based on the size of the bundle of the loom. And then once they're wire tied, then you can go ahead and cover it with the split loom. Now, they make a lot of accessories for split loom. Um, depending on the project, we will or will not use them. Uh, you can get elbows and tees and all sorts of uh, nice fittings that clean things up and make it look nice. Uh, this project, we're going to make it look nice, but we're not going to the expense of getting all the little uh, accessories. So anyway, uh, let me get started and I'll, I'll do a section and, and show it to you. So this is the section that, uh, for the sake of the video, that I'll show. Um, this is, you know, the before. I'll try not to bump the camera, and uh, and then I'll show you the after. Uh, but there's some other stuff I'm going to do prior to this. So like I said, hopefully I can get that done without klutzing into the camera and knocking the shot off here. But uh, stay with me. Well, here's a quick shot of that one section we talked about. Um, did bump the camera a few times, but uh, pretty much the same shot we showed you before. It could be cleaned up even more, but this is not the final rendition here. There are still items to be added to this vehicle. Um, so we just wanted to clean it up, organize it, so there's still uh, accessibility to all of our terminal strips. Um, the big thing, we just wanted to have everything cleaned and organized so we could see exactly where it goes, what's loomed with what. Um, here's uh, some relays um, that we've kind of banded together and then covered with tape to keep them from uh, accidentally being uh, touched with a screwdriver or something. Um, we have a horn relay 
we've got uh, a headlight relay, we got a high beam relay, and then we had to add an, a relay because we were mixing um, some old school stuff with some new school stuff. In other words, we've got LED lights, we've got uh, some incandescent lights, the turn signal uh, control is, a, is an old school control. So we had to use a relay and some diodes in order to get everything to function uh, properly uh, together. And so some extra components that you might not always have um, that this one has. Um, but the gist of things for this video is that things are organized, cleaned up, uh, tied together. I'm working on the dash now up here. Um, like I said, that was actually completed previously with the conversion. The um, wiring on this side fender over here is all new that was added with uh, the addition of lights, headlights turn signals, emergency flashers, all that. So now it's a matter of cleaning up this dash. So once this is all a little more organized and cleaned up, we need to uh, go on the other side of the dash and clean up all the wiring, you know, uh, underneath the the dash and as well as uh, for the rear lights, we've got uh, rear tail brake and turn signals and reverse lights. And so that will need to be um, loomed and covered. And so you kind of get the idea. Uh, we're not going to split loom any of this. It's just uh, being uh, secured with wire ties. Uh, you take some of the slack out of some of these things and organize it a little bit better. But uh, this is the uh, signal flasher. It will be secured so that everything has a, a fixed location, can easily be ID'd, easily be, um, you know, if this were to malfunction, have to be replaced, it'll be easy to get to, clip a wire tie, unplug it, put another one in, that type of thing. Um, so, still, still working on this part. So we have, uh, I think, three inline fuses, four, four inline fuses um, that came with uh, some of the products that were purchased. So we left those as inline fuses. Here's one. This is one that we added. This is for the headlights. Um, but um, most of the conversion stuff, all of the conversion stuff is run through this fuse block, as well as a couple other items um, uh, that, that run through there. So anyway, just to give you an idea of, you know, a, a typical project that you might have, uh, this is a lot more wiry than on a typical conversion because this vehicle is built from scratch without any wiring. So there were no factory looms or anything. So all this is from scratch. So it's a lot more of a, uh, a task and a lot more to, to do. We weren't originally going to add the lights and stuff. Uh, it was going to be somebody else's job. And so really didn't plan that much for it, uh, and so we have some add-on now, which kind of takes away from uh, the original aesthetics, but uh, that's what you're going to be doing in a conversion, you'll be adding to what was originally there. So just to give you an idea of what you can do to, to kind of make things a little cleaner, uh, a little easier to service. The other thing is, uh, I'll quickly mention, is that wire loom also comes in different colors. 
I prefer the black as it uh, makes things kind of disappear. You remember what it looked like on the back side of this? There was wires running from uh, one side to the other. Well, putting it in the, the loom, it just basically disappears. Um, we showed you a shot of the turn signal and, and uh, running lights here. Well, once it's loomed, it's much cleaner, less likely to have something happen to your, your wiring. And so we'll continue to, to finish this project and uh, perhaps in the future bring you more information regards to this uh, demonstration vehicle and its um, use, its uh, layout, and its operation. As always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please address all questions and comments to info at ev4unow.com and we'll be happy to answer any questions.